This video is about gears. There are different types of gears. There's a bevel gear, a rack and pinion, a worm gear, a planetary gear, and there are other different types. The one we're mostly going to be going over in this video is spur gears. A gear is a wheel with teeth. They're typically going to be meshed with other gears that are larger or smaller, depending on if you're wanting more torque or more speed. So the gears are used for either changing speed, changing direction of the motion, or changing the torque. When two gears mesh, they are meshing at the pitch point. That's the point where the gear teeth actually make contact with each other as they rotate. With gears, you're either trading speed for torque or the other way around. Have you ever noticed that a sports car can go very fast, but you really can't haul anything heavy with it? Where a dump truck, it doesn't go very fast, but you're able to haul a very heavy load with it. So what is torque? We've talked about work being force times distance, and for that it's a linear distance. Well, for torque, we are going to do a rotational or circular distance. So we're going to take instead force times the radius, and that'll equal torque. The unit that you're going to see for torque is going to be usually a foot-pound. Also, notice whenever we talked before about we're trading out torque for speed, it's because of this equation here that says power equals torque times speed. So when we increase our torque, we're going to decrease our speed because the power is pretty much going to stay the same. Let's look at this gear train here. When we're trying to figure out the gear ratio, it's going to be able to tell us if it's a larger number that it has a higher torque, and if the gear ratio is a smaller number, it means that it's going to have a larger speed, or RPM. So I am going to rotate this gear right here, and I'm going to rotate it until the second gear has gone one full rotation. So I'm going to count. If I've gone one rotation here, this one hasn't gone very far. So we'll count one, two, three, four, five, six, it's almost there, seven. So it took me seven rotations of this small gear to move the larger gear one time around. So my gear ratio, without doing the math, just counting, is going to be a seven to one. By looking at this same gear train, I'm going to make my larger gear my driving gear and my smaller gear my driven gear this time. So as we start rotating it, you can tell that I haven't even gone one time around and my smaller gear has already done one full uh, revolution. So I'm sure you can kind of guess, if I started counting here, that the large gear, for it to rotate one time around, then the smaller gear is going to rotate seven. So now my gear ratio is going to be a one to seven. This is going to be a smaller gear ratio, obviously, than seven to one. So we know now that the driver gear to the driven gear, the driven gear is going to uh, revolve at a, a higher RPM. In the videos you just saw, I was able to rotate the gear and be able to get the gear ratio. But I'm not gonna be able to do that every time because I might not have it built or I might be trying to figure out the gear ratio before I build it. So in that case, I'm going to have to do math to be able to get those values. All right, so these are the equations we're gonna use for the math to get the values that we need. First, let's look at the example here. Notice the smaller one has the word in. That means that it is the one that either you're rotating or you've hooked a motor up to it. It's also called the driver gear. So in and then 
out is the one that's rotating based on the fact that it is meshed with the other gear. Out is also sometimes called the driven gear. All right, so in is going to be the number of teeth. We can count it. D is our diameter. Notice that it's given to us. Two for the small one, four for the larger one. Here is our angular velocity. All right, notice that this one is opposite. N, D, and torque are all out over N. But notice with torque being out over N, your angular velocity is opposite. We trade torque for speed. So our angular velocity is N over out. The smaller the gear ratio is, the faster the uh, angular velocity is going to be. So the values are already put in here for you. Number of teeth, 12 over 6. 6 into 12 is going to be 2, so the ratio is 2 to 1. Notice all the other numbers are giving you the same thing. All right, so if our N, being smaller, is rotating at 40 RPMs, then our out is going to be going slower. It's going to be going half the speed. Notice again, N over out with angular velocity. Everything else is out over N. Let's look at this example here. First, we're going to look at what we're given. We've got a 12-tooth driver gear. Right? So this small gear here is going to be my N. We have a 36-tooth driven gear. So this larger gear is going to be my out. I'm also given 100 RPMs. I know that if I use a 393 VEX motor at full power, it's going to have an RPM of 100. So say I'm needing to pick something up that's a little bit heavier, maybe that 100 RPMs is not going to give me enough torque so that I can raise it or get over maybe a hump, then I'm going to need to hook up gears to it so that uh, whatever this is attached to will have more torque. So this is something that you might see whenever you're building the robot. So let's look at the equation. I've got number of teeth and I have RPM. So I'm going to use the equation that is in number of teeth out over number of teeth in and I'm going to set it equal to my angular velocity in over my angular velocity out. Okay, plugging these values in, my out is 36, my in is 12. Just looking at that I can tell that I have a gear ratio of 3. I set it equal to my angular velocity in is 100 RPM, and I'm trying to find my angular velocity out. All right, so 100 times 12 divided by 36 gives me 33.3 RPM. Right, let's look at this second example. I still have a 12 tooth gear and a 36 tooth gear. But this time I have as my driver gear the large 36 tooth and my driven gear as the smaller 12 tooth. So my in is the larger one, my out is the smaller one. And we're also given that we have 5.0 foot pounds on the smaller gear, which is our driven. Okay, so the equation that we're going to use this time is still going to be in, out, over number of teeth, in. But this time we're going to use torque. Torque, out, over torque, in. So my number of teeth, out, is going to be 12 this time. And my number of teeth, in, is 36. I'm going to set that equal to my torque, out, which is 5.0 foot-pounds, and I'm going to solve for torque in. So we have 5.0 times 36 divided by 12, and that's going to give me 15 foot-pounds. All right, so notice 15 is larger than 5, so we're starting out with 15 foot-pounds 
And then the smaller gear is only ending up with five foot-pounds. So as you can see then, we are trading the torque for speed. Because if we did this again, with speed being our angular velocity, we would notice that our smaller gear would have a higher speed. And our gear ratio is going to be one to three this time, which is a smaller number. So the smaller the gear ratio, the higher the angular velocity, and the smaller the torque on the out gear. And sometimes you're going to hear the terms geared up and geared down when you're building your robots. If you're gearing something up, you're actually wanting to add more speed. If you're gearing it down, then you're going to want less speed and more torque. And it's kind of backwards, I know, because we talked about the higher the gear ratio, the higher the torque, and the lower the gear ratio, lower the torque. And that's why I want to bring it up here, because uh, a lot of times when they're talking about this, they're wanting to say more speed because you want that so that you can get to something quicker. Now, for lifting something, especially with the arm, you're usually wanting to gear it down. Um, so if you hear that, realize they're talking about speed and not the actual gear ratio, okay?